Good evening, everybody. Um, welcome to Zoo Blue's uh, second webinar in our Discover series. Um, and this time we are all about uh, discovering Indonesia. Um, so my aim today is to give you uh, an overview of Indonesia from a scuba diving perspective. Um, my goal is to kind of highlight why Indonesia is so special, um, some quick insights about how to get to Indonesia and travel around easily. Um, very important, when's the best time to dive and where to dive, depending on your wishes. Um, some guidance around who to book your trip with and sort of some rough ideas of, great. So why is Indonesia so special for scuba diving? Well, Indonesia is actually the largest archipelago in the world and has over 17,500 islands. Um, Excitingly, there are also over 400 marine protected areas, but that still represents a very small portion of um, the seas and oceans around Indonesia as a whole, but um, more work is coming there. And it is really regarded as the epicenter of uh, marine biodiversity in the world. So it's gonna be a little bit of a challenge to address the largest archipelago in the world in 45 minutes, but we're gonna do uh, as much as we can. Um, this webinar, as I mentioned, is going to be a bit more of an overview. And then over the coming um, months and so, we're going to be doing deeper dives into specific destinations as well with this webinar series um, to give even more kind of insight. Um, but hopefully just at a high level, this will be useful guidance um, to all of you looking to come to travel and uh, dive here. So not only is it the largest archipelago in the world, um, but it is basically the cornerstone of the Coral Triangle, representing, you know, the real base of, of what is regarded as the sort of most marine biodiverse area in the world. Um, it also sits between two enormous oceans, um, the Indian Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. So it benefits from huge bodies of water, a lot of currents, a lot of nutrients traveling through uh, the islands, and that obviously enables um, a fast, fantastic amount of coral growth. Um, it enables a, a huge amount of biodiversity as well. So its position as the sort of main region within the Coral Triangle is ultimately um, why Indonesia is probably regarded as the best diving destination in the world in terms of the variety of uh, experiences it offers. Um, it's quite hard to sort of sum up everything it offers, um, but we've got a very good friend of ours here at Zoo Blue, um, Alex Lindblom. He's kindly let us uh, use his little kind of promo video of the archipelago um, as a little teaser about what it offers. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of let that run very quickly for you all um, so that you can kind of get a sense of what kind of underwater experiences you might get here.
Um, but yeah, as you can see, some very quick highlights. Um, you've got the big pelagics, you've got whales, um, dolphins, all sorts. You've got manta rays, sharks, um, uh, incredible coral. Um, you've got beautiful mangroves and some fantastic macro as well. So over the course of this webinar, I'm going to try and take you through the various destinations and highlight which ones um, offer what. Um, so ultimately, we can help you make the best travel decisions possible. So how to get to and travel around Indonesia. Um, just some uh, quick insights. Uh, from an international perspective, um, there are kind of three routes into Indonesia. Uh, <clears throat> Jakarta is, is probably the main one. You've got good uh, 35 international routes, um, <clears throat> a lot coming from the Middle East if you're bouncing through Europe. Um, if you're coming over from America, you can kind of hop through the likes of Japan and South Korea or, or China as well. Um, Bali is the sort of other main international route in, um, really accessible from Australia, um, also good through the Middle East. Um, and again, kind of uh, through Japan, South Korea as well, if you're coming all the way over from the US too. Um, one place that not many people know of, but is a good little trick to know, is there is Manado in the sort of northern part of Sulawesi, um, in the northern part of Indonesia. It's got direct routes from Singapore a few times a week that allows you access into the Sulawesi area, but you can then hop um, quite easily on to the likes of Raja Ampat, which are obviously a, a particular favorite for scuba divers. Once you're in Indonesia, um, from a domestic perspective, it gets a lot more complex. Um, there are a lot of little uh, regional airports or small hubs as well. Um, the good thing about Jakarta is that it gives you access pretty much everywhere within Indonesia, where if you're coming into Bali, the domestic flights are generally only taking you through to the southern parts of Indonesia um, or maybe into Sulawesi. Um, so if you're going deep into Indonesia, like the Raja Ampats um, that everyone's aware of, um, probably through Jakarta's easiest. One thing to note is that the domestic flights can be quite challenging and be a little bit unreliable and have some last minute, minute scheduling changes. Um, so when we're planning your trips within Indonesia, we try and aim to make sure there's a little bit of a buffer, especially ahead of like overboard departure days um, that you arrive before, just in case anything um, goes awry, we're here to help. Um, but yeah, that's our role at Zoo Blue. We're here to help make sure this is smooth and easy for you as well. Once you're in destination, um, especially places like Bali or Jakarta, um, we highly recommend downloading uh, one of the super apps like Grab or Gojek, um, very much like an Uber. Um, very easy to use here to kind of order taxis or little mopeds or even order food on. Um, you can pay in cash so you don't need to uh, sign up with any sort of Indonesian bank accounts or anything like that. Um, so very easy to download, just get a SIM card at the airport and you're kind of fairly empowered with uh, apps like these. In terms of uh, the visas and COVID situation at the moment, um, when you arrive in Indonesia, um, you get a visa on arrival that uh, costs 500,000 IDR, um, which is roughly sort of 30, 35 US dollars. You can either pay that on arrival um, or you can apply and pay for it online in advance, which certainly makes life easier. You can skip a few of the queues when you do arrive at your international airport. From a COVID perspective, um, uh, the Indonesia immigration still does um, require people to be vaccinated um, and have evidence of that. They aren't really doing any kind of um, uh, COVID tests or needing proof of COVID tests but the, the vaccination is key at the moment. Um, hopefully that maybe might change um, over the coming period as, as things continue to settle around the world. So when is the best time to dive in Indonesia? Um, so kind of going back to the beginning and the fact that this is the largest archipelago in the world and has quite a few islands, it is quite a challenge to kind of categorically say 
when is the best time. Um, in general, uh, Indonesia is a year round destination um, and there is good diving throughout the year all across the country. Um, however, what I'm going to try and do is give some insights into choosing the best place for particular months and, and make sure that you're getting the peak experiences in certain regions. So the way we would view Indonesia, um, we've kind of color coded the regions here. Um, we don't really focus too much on the diving in Sumatra and Java. Um, predominantly, <clears throat> the diving destinations that I've highlighted with um, the blue dots here, these would be where we consider the best diving spots to visit and where there is a lot of opportunity in terms of resorts and liverboards that can take you there. So when it comes to highlighting the best time to dive in all of these destinations, um, I've come up with a little bit of a, a plan to illustrate this and hopefully it will make sense. Um, throughout all of these destinations, it is probably easy to regard those three dots that I've just highlighted as the most biodiverse part. Those include the likes of um, Banda, uh, Triton Bay, Missoula, and then and then heading up into Raja Ampat as well. So if we consider those to be the most biodiverse places, and we'll we'll kind of start the focus on those, I'm going to use a friend of ours, the uh, pelagic argonaut octopus, um, and in particular take its shell. And if we lie its shell over Indonesia, and we use the internal bit of that spiral as our starting point, we can sort of take a journey around Indonesia, starting in those Bandar Islands in the, the middle of the spiral, and then take you round all the way through Papua, and then up over the top through Sulawesi, down through Kalimantan, over to Bali, and then along the sort of southern part of Indonesia. Rather conveniently, as we travel around that spiral, it is kind of arguably following the months of the year, starting January in Banda and all the way around, sort of finishing in towards the end of the year in Bali, Nusa and Tagara, that's the best time to dive. <clears throat> so if I lay that out more in a kind of graph form, I've laid those destinations along the spiral in order. And we can kind of see that although some destinations are year round, there is a sort of general trend that the best times to dive in each location sort of follow that line as it spirals around Indonesia. Hopefully that makes sense. I, I think it's a pretty good way of viewing, viewing uh, the things in Indonesia. Um, but if you can imagine that shell lying over the top of everything, um, that's quite a good way to work it out. So with that in mind, um, I'm going to run through those destinations and help kind of give some guidance about where to dive in Indonesia. And following that spiral, I will start in the Banda Islands and work our way around um, uh, the kind of top diving destinations within Indonesia. So the Banda Islands are, are, in my opinion, one of the most exciting places to be visiting in Indonesia. Um, it is really remote diving out there, very underdeveloped. Um, you're going to be getting uh, hammerheads. There's some uh, great uh, underwater sea mounts. You get lots of sea snakes, lots of challenging drifts, huge amounts of fish stock. Uh, and there's also some really good macro as well. But because it's quite remote, um, the best way to get to Banda um, is by uh, liverboard. And itineraries generally start um, in Ambon, um, the Patimura airport and then we'll head up from Banda all the way over to Rajarampat. So you're really getting the best of Indonesia um, with these crossing itineraries. The best time to visit is really sort of between September and May. Um, over the peak of the, the start of the year, it's very good. But the reason why April, May, and then September, October are good, is that's the time of year the liverboards are making the crossing from Komodo down in the south up to Rajarampat. And as part of those journeys, they offer these special itineraries that take you through this incredible area. 
diving level wise, it is possible for beginners to go here. Um, but we really, really recommend that you've got your advance just because you're going to get the full experience, having that extra depth, being a little bit more comfortable um, in drifts and current dives as well. And because liverboards are only really going there, it isn't really such a good place for, for snorkelers and families, um, just as there isn't really too much else for them to do when they're sort of stuck on a boat all day. So moving on from Banda, <clears throat> we're going to head up towards uh, West Papua. Um, and in West Papua includes um, obviously the famous Rajarampat, uh, which is a great year round destination. But there's um, Missoula, which is more in the south, which is very famous for the marine park that they've created in that area. Um, and there's also the little known Triton Bay, which is very special. Uh, it's good from October to April, um, generally March, April, January, February, March, April is particularly good, <clears throat> which is why we've sort of joined it on the spiral in this way. But arguably these are the most biodiverse seas on the planet. Um, you're gonna have everything from mantas and sharks to tuna, again, huge fish stocks. You're gonna have the most incredible reefs um, you've ever seen. There's also great macro while you're not obsessing over the reefs and everything else you're seeing. Um, there's also the famous sort of mangroves, which are uh, sort of, you get all the mangrove tree roots coming down into the water covered in soft coral, a great nursery um, for juvenile fish as well. So it is, yeah, one of the most spectacular places. Thankfully, there's a huge amount of options in terms of experiencing Rajarampat. Um, you've got a lot of uh, very um, eco-consciously built resorts. Um, <clears throat> and because they've done that and built them in a very conscious way, they've ensured that they've protected their house reefs. So a lot of them have really beautiful house reefs that you can hop in on um, from an unlimited diving perspective or, or just snorkel on uh, when you're taking a bit of time off from diving. However, if you're a very keen diver, liverboards, again, are the best way to experience it because they'll be taking you around all of the best of the best dive sites, whereas resorts sometimes have a little bit more of a limited dive site catchment area. Um, and then the other option is the charter yachts where you take a, a small kind of uh, Indonesian Venisi or yacht um, privately, great for, for small groups, families, and you can create your own personalized itineraries depending on kind of what you're, you're keen to do. Diving wise, it's a great spot for beginners. Um, a lot of our guests go out there and learn. I'm very jealous that that's <laughs> the place that they'll learn to dive, being one of the best places in the world. Um, but again, we'd, we'd probably recommend that you do have your advanced uh, or get it when you're out there, just because it will give you a little bit more accessibility into some of the more challenging but exciting dive sites. And it is a fantastic place for snorkelers and families, um, beautiful house reefs. Uh, lots of activities to do as well in terms of kayaking, um, going to see birds of paradise and so on. Um, so really good for snorkelers and families if you're going on the resorts or the kind of more personalized itineraries of the charter yachts. <clears throat> Excuse me. In terms of reaching there, um, you're looking to get to an airport called Sarong. Um, you can come in over the north of Indonesia through Manado that I mentioned um, <clears throat> or get flights from the likes of Jakarta. So fairly, fairly accessible. If we then head over the north of Indonesia, um, we get to uh, the northern tip of Sulawesi. Um, and the first place we would reach is Lembe. Um, so Lembe is regarded as the critter capital of the world um, or the muck diving capital of the world. Uh, Lembe is very unique in that it's um, located in uh, a channel between the mainland of Sulawesi and then, and then Lembe Island. Um, and through that channel comes a huge amount of nutrients and water flow, and that has sort of led to uh, a really, really kind of big increase in, in diversity and quirkiness in the marine life. Um, so here you get to see um, mimic octopus, coconut octopus, uh, wonderpuses, you'll get flamboyant cuttlefish, you'll get pretty much every species of seahorse you can think of. There'll be lots of nudibranchs. Um, and the diving's really relaxed. You've got, or they will get a bit of current occasionally. Generally, the reefs here are shallow sloping reefs with lots of coral bombies. Um, and you've got a whole load of expert uh, dive guides that are really good at spotting these 
particularly rare critters that are always very well camouflaged and hidden. Um, so very gentle dives, uh, just marveling at the wonder of what the ocean can create in terms of bizarre animals. Um, and then you'll always kind of finish the dives fairly shallow in seagrass beds or just amongst coral bombies. Um, doing a very prolonged safety stop. And ultimately, a lot of your dives here will be limited by you hitting 50 bar on your tank rather than it being very um, sort of uh, time sensitive, uh, like sort of finishing on 45 minutes or finishing on the hour that a lot of places do. So really good for photographers as well. I would say it's definitely a year round destination as well. Um, but what we've learned or the the community of divers have learned is that these critters often come up more from the depths when there's more cold water and more upwelling um, coming up from the depths as well. And they sort of come up shallower into more uh, accessible diving depths. So although it is year round, we'd probably suggest the summer um, towards October, November is a, is a good time to be visiting to get the best of it. Um, as I mentioned, yeah, diving level, good for beginners, um, really good for photographers who are passionate about uh, taking cool shots. Snorkelers, family-wise, not really that exciting just because it's quite hard to appreciate small little things while you're floating uh, on the surface, sort of five or 10 meters above them. Um, but there is a lot of fun land tours on Sulawesi itself. Um, there's some great uh, national parks there. Uh, some, you get to see the, the endemic uh, black crested macaques. Um, you've got tarsiers there as well. So there's some good little land adventures to add on. In terms of reaching Lembe, um, you can come into Monado, which you can get to directly from Singapore, which is the little trick I was telling you at the beginning. On the northern side of this uh, peninsula of Sulawesi, you have the really exciting Bunaken Marine Park. Um, and in complete, kind of completely different to, to all the critters of Lembe, Bunaken is actually just an incredible area with beautiful, vibrant and rich reefs, huge amounts of fish stock, um, great for turtles. And it is good for macro as well, but generally you're just admiring the beauty um, of the reefs and the underwater environment around you. So Bunaken and Lembe are really lovely complementary dive destinations that you can do uh, very easily together in a trip. One going from the beautiful reefs and then also doing the cool critters at, at Lembe. Um, it is also a year round destination, um, but we like to think maybe May to July and September, October are the best times to visit. In terms of options here, uh, resorts is the way to go. There are some absolutely stunning resorts um, located right in the heart of the marine park, giving you great access to all the dive sites. We've also got a whole load of really lovely kind of eco-conscious, um, more boutique lodges um, that are a great uh, option for those that are traveling on a little bit more of a budget, um, but a very, very special place, very easily accessible because you also just fly into Monado. Um, as a destination, it's probably one of our most booked in Indonesia. Um, it's very accessible for beginners. It is also fantastic for families because the reefs there are beautiful for, uh, for snorkelers as well. Um, so a really, really lovely destination. So we're then heading around the spiral a little bit more. Um, we're now heading a bit more west and touching the uh, eastern side of Borneo um, and there's a destination there that um, is little known called Maratua Atoll. Now Maratua Atoll is located you know a couple of hundred miles uh, south of Sipadan which is um, in the Malaysian waters on the east, eastern side of Borneo um, and Sipadan is obviously a, a, a world-renowned diving destination and Maratua is actually considered to be Indonesia's Sipadan. Um, and a lot of the dive sites in Maratua are also named the same as those famous dive sites in Sipadan. And that's ultimately because you're gonna get very, very similar diving experiences, perhaps even arguably better. So in terms of what you can get at Maratua Atoll, um, 
there are dive sites like Barracuda Point, um, which will have all of the reef sharks, schools of barracuda, turtles everywhere. Um, you'll also have uh, Manta Alley, which is great for manta rays that come in and clean uh, to the cleaning stations on the bommies there. Um, you get thresher sharks, you get leopard sharks. Uh, you'll also be able to go visit the very unique jellyfish lake, which is uh, a lake full of stingless jellyfish that's very interesting to go snorkeling. Um, and there's also some pretty good macro there as well. So it really does offer everything. Um, probably one of the most all round dive destinations in Indonesia. In terms of best time to visit, um, can argue it's year round. Um, I definitely would say between March and October is best. Um, maybe avoid January. A lot of the resorts close in January just because of the weather conditions and they will uh, yeah, just be doing some annual kind of repairs and updates or renovations. Um, so March to October is, is arguably the best time. Liverboards really don't visit this part of Indonesia very often. So resorts is the way forward. Um, again, there's some really good options between the more affordable um, as well as a couple of uh, very nice, uh, more luxurious ones too. Uh, I'd say it is suitable for any diving level, um, but if you want to enjoy the big, big experiential sites, again, being advanced is highly recommended. Uh, it's a lovely place for snorkelers and families too. Getting there, however, is the challenge. Um, your ultimate goal airport is Barao, but the only way to get Barao is to go from Balakpapan and Balakpapan you would get to from the likes of Jakarta. So you're looking at kind of two domestic flights to get through to Barao. There'll be a little short car transfer and then a sort of two and a half hour, three hour boat transfer out to the atoll. Um, so it is a little bit of a challenge, um, but it is really, 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 really worth it. Um, I was very fortunate to go there all the way back in 2004 um, when we were doing a shoot with the BBC. And I remember being sat on the beach on the last day of the shoot. Um, there was a couple of shots they needed to get. So the team went off to get those. I wasn't needed on that dive. And as they all jumped on the boats, um, one of the island rangers came over saying a turtle nest was hatching. Um, so I got to go sit with a turtle nest on my own for two hours watching all these baby hawksbill turtles dig their way out and head off on their own adventures, um, whizzing down the beach and, and off into the sea. Um, so yeah, some really magical experiences to be had in Maratu Atoll and can highly recommend it. Um, even though the travel is a bit complex, what we can also do at Zoo Blue is help organize land adventures. And one thing to note in this particular area is at Balakpapan, there's a really lovely uh, orangutan sanctuary and a sun bear sanctuary um, and they also offer some really lovely river cruises um, and jungle tours to go see um, proboscis monkeys and all the various incredible kind of land wildlife that Borneo offers um, so it's actually quite nice to break up your trip to Maratua Atoll with a few days at Balakpapan to get that land adventure as well um, and that just softens the challenge of of reaching it as a destination with all of those uh, domestic flights. So as we head down the eastern coast of uh, Borneo, um, we'll then pretty much land straight into Bali. Um, Bali is obviously a very famous destination. Um, we'll definitely be doing a webinar specifically on Bali and all the variety that it offers, um, but it does have a lot uh, to give. So. If we start sort of in the north of Bali, you've got the very lovely uh, reefs up in uh, the Manjangan Marine Park in the northwest. Uh, um, as you head along the top, you get towards Tulumben, where there's the, the famous uh, Liberty Wreck. A bit further round, you get to Ahmed, which is great for macro diving. Um, coming down the east side of Bali, you go through kind of Chandidasa, Panang Bai, um, great learning grounds for new divers, um, as well as some lovely reefs. But if we head off the east coast of Bali to the nearby islands of Nusa Lumbong and Nusa Penida, that's where you get um, the manta rays um, that are there year round and pr pretty much guaranteed. Um, although some of our partners <laughs> probably won't enjoy me saying that. Um, you also get the mola mola uh, there, uh, the sunfish. Um, they're 
a bit more towards the end of the year at their peak, I guess I'd say September, October. And there's lovely reefs around all of those islands as well and some lovely drift diving across those reefs. Um, so a huge amount of option there. Um, accommodation wise, it's Bali, it's very well um, developed. So you've got everything from local guest houses all the way up to luxury resorts and beachfront villas and, and all sorts. So whatever you fancy, there will be something on offer for you. Diving wise, suitable for everyone. Great for snorkelers and families and very easily accessible um, straight into uh, Denpasar Airport. So if we then head along from Bali East, we're then entering Nusa Tenggara and we quite quickly reach um, Komodo, which is the other really famous dive destination standing alongside Raja Ampat probably um, within Indonesia. Um, Komodo, uh, again, a year round destination, um, but given the spiral that I'm trying to instill, uh, probably say it's a little bit better coming towards the end of the year maybe. Um, that makes the south side of Komodo a little bit more accessible um, when the waves are a bit calmer. Um, but actually, at the moment, we're saying we would say we're coming into good season now at Komodo. A lot of the liverboards are there at the moment. Um, diving wise, it's it's a very, very exciting destination. Um, you get a lot of pelagic marine life. The currents are ripping. Um, you get a lot of manta rays, sharks, so on. Um, beautiful corals, lots of action, lots of fish stock. Uh, so very, very exciting. Um, you also can go see the Komodo dragons um, on, on the islands there as well, which is very unique. So with all of that current and action, it is okay for beginners, but again, we'd be saying advanced is better just so you can experience it to the full. And then accommodation wise, lots of options. Um, all the resorts are pretty much located on the eastern side of the park. There are no resorts allowed in Komodo itself. Um, there's one resort on the west side, um, uh, Kalimaya, which is a very special place. Um, but the majority of the resorts are on the east side. So they will do diving sort of day trips from their resort into the park. However, if you're a very keen diver, I'd definitely be recommending liverboards just because that will get you deeper into the park um, to the best dive sites, save a lot of travel time each day, um, you know, not traveling back and forth from resorts and give you the full uh, Komodo experience. Charter yachts are also a great option, especially if you're a group of friends, you know, just popping over for a long weekend from the likes of Singapore or Australia. <coughs> Excuse me. You can, you know, get a small two to six cabin uh, private yacht and we can help create a personalized itinerary um, depending on what you fancy. Uh, again, yeah, very good for snorkelers and families, especially if you're staying on resorts or doing the charter options. Uh, to get to Komodo, you're flying into Labuan Bajo, um, which is very uh, easily accessible from the likes of Bali um, or Jakarta. And then the final destination that I wanted to highlight um, is a law, uh, which is kind of all the way to the east end of uh, Nusan Tenggara, all the way along the bottom of the, the shell, so to speak. Um, <coughs> similar to Maratua, um, maybe a little known destination, um, but very exciting once you're there. Um, really good currents, lots of sharks, especially famous for the hammerheads. Um, there's also some very, very unique macro over there as well. Uh, here, we'd say it's better towards the end of the year, um, especially October, November time, because of the, the weathers and the monsoon. Um, a lot of the resorts here, not that there are many, close um, December to March. And yeah, there aren't many options over here. It is a fairly remote location. Um, so resorts is really the only way to go. There are some liverboards that do put itineraries through there. Um, but Resorts are probably the best way, just as they'll know the area better and the dive guides will be more proficient at giving you the best experiences. Um, because of the currents, it's definitely advanced and up, in, in my opinion. And also because of the currents and maybe the remoteness and the fact that it's not very well developed as a tourist destination, there's not really much sort of else on offer apart from diving. 
Um, so probably not such a good place for snorkelers and, and families. Um, getting there is a bit fiddly. Um, you're looking ultimately to get to Mali Airport, uh, which is on a law. Um, I, I think there's an air, another airport in Indonesia called a law, which helps make things confusing. Um, but yeah, Zublu's here to, to help out with any of that, that travel logistics. Great. So that's hopefully a useful little tour from around Indonesia and helps give a little bit of insight into trying to choose the right time of year to go to certain places. As mentioned, a lot of the places are year round, but keen to kind of suggest the peak time so you do get the best uh, underwater experience as possible. So who to book your trip with and kind of a rough idea what it might cost. Um, just from Zublu's perspective, um, you know, we are here to help you organize your travel uh, experiences and all the underwater experiences. And ultimately from our side, it always starts with you, you know, what you want to see when you're looking to travel and that will kind of guide us on where we think you should go. Um, we've got options in 17 of the best dive destinations in Indonesia. We've got over a hundred dive resorts that we've essentially selected from personal experience. Um, we've got over 65 liverboards offering all sorts of itineraries. Um, again, depending on what you fancy, we'll definitely find an option for you. Um, and we've got a, a growing collection of partners in terms of charter yachts that do those private experiences as well. So, you know, really don't hesitate to reach out to us um, and we'll be happy to put the <clears throat> best experience together for you. You can also hop on to the Zublu website. Um, I just wanted to highlight our collections. Um, the way we've uh, organized our collections is it sort of allows you to look at everything that we have on offer and then start tailoring it a little bit more to your preferences. So you can choose your holiday type, whether that's resort or liverboards, select the destination that you're interested in. Um, and then, you know, if you're traveling solo or as a couple or family, if you want overwater villas, a good house reef, so on, you can plug in your wishes and that will sort of narrow down the options as suggestions um, or just reach out to either myself, which I'll give you my details at the end or my expert team. And, and we'll be able to help put you in the right place. So in terms of those sort of variety of options, um, dive centers, great for just doing the day trips. Um, you know, if you're here in holiday in Bali um, or you're kind of exploring the islands off the east coast of Bali, if you're just wanting to squeeze a bit of diving in, dive centers the way to go. They're run very, by very passionate and caring people. Um, so great for the little day trips. Um, you can also do your entry level courses with them very easily and also good spots to do your dive master and instructor training if that's what you're looking to do. Um, <clears throat> from a pricing perspective, open water courses in Indonesia generally start from about $350 up, although the more luxury resorts will charge a bit more. Um, if you're doing your advance, that's usually sort of $300 plus. Uh, in terms of the day trips, if you're doing sort of land-based diving around mainland Bali, you're probably looking at 130 US for a two-dive day trip, um, maybe 160 plus if you're going out on the boats around the islands. Uh, dive resort-wise, um, there is a huge amount of, uh, of options for you throughout Indonesia. Um, dive resorts are, are kind of great for everybody, um, whether it's beginners, families, couples, solo, and so on. Um, a lot of them will have really good house reefs to either be learning on or just uh, cramming in on your unlimited dive package. Um, obviously a great resort for more relaxed divers who maybe just like to do a couple in the morning and then maybe uh, do a few land tours in the afternoon as well. One thing to note in Indonesia, because we get asked this a lot, is there aren't really any all-inclusive resorts that have all of the meals and your alcohol included in packages. This is obviously something that happens a lot in places like the Maldives, um, but not, not really offered here in Indonesia. Um, Price-wise, it can go from, you know, lovely, simple little uh, boutique guest houses from $20 a night all the way up to the, the super luxurious uh, resorts such as Bunaken, which is the top images, the top image, or um, Mazul, where, where, you know, you're, you're $500 um, plus a night. Um, 
Also, just to note, the resorts can price things in slightly different ways. Um, a lot of the resorts just do sort of diver and non-diver packages for your stay, depending on how many nights you're there. Everything's included in terms of the food, transfers, um, the diving or non-diving if, you, if you're not. Um, and that just gets bundled together. Um, whereas some resorts are a little bit more customized where you can kind of adjust the number of dives you're looking to do um, tailor things a little bit more as well. However, for divers, which um, I imagine most of you are on the webinar, uh, liverboards, in my opinion, are the way to go. Um, again, they're taking you on itineraries throughout Indonesia. Um, they're going to be taking you to the best dive sites for that season in that location. Um, yeah, and they're actually surprisingly good value, in my opinion, given that they include everything from the accommodation, the food and the diving. Um, and obviously the options we have will will range from, you know, small, affordable, kind of more backpackery liverboards in the likes of Komodo all the way up to um, the luxurious boats such as uh, Coralia pictured here. Um, some things to note are kind of the more remote you go in Indonesia, the bigger the requirement is that you're an advanced uh, scuba diver. Um, there are also some really special, unique itineraries that take you to sort of some pretty special places. So if you're looking for something a little bit different from the normal, um, don't hesitate to reach out. There aren't really too many non-diver options. Um, there are some sort of snorkeling specific, specific trips. Um, you can join liverboard as a non-diver but it's quite hard for them to manage you having snorkeling experiences when they've got a boat that's meant to be overseeing all the divers and providing the safety um, support there um, so a little bit challenging for the non-diver um, and as i mentioned at the beginning um, very important to be aware of arrival and departure times in terms of flights especially with the sort of uh, unreliability of the, the domestic travel um, and then the uh, other option that I've mentioned a few times is the charter yachts. So this is where you can take um, a boat uh, privately. <clears throat> um, we can create personalized experiences and itineraries for you. Really, really fun um, for families and groups of friends and also great for non-divers because you can really customize it. If you want to go sit on the beach for the day while people go off diving, that's fine. If you're wanting to go off snorkeling while there's people off diving, you can do that as well. So very, very personable. Um, the size of these, these boats is generally a little bit smaller than the liverboards, um, ranging from sort of you know, a private one cabin boat um, up to eight or so. Price-wise, um, you're obviously paying for the entirety of the boat. Um, so generally it ranges from about 1,750 US per day all the way up to the super luxury. Um, but once you divide that across everybody that's on board with you, these actually can be surprisingly quite um, affordable options. Obviously, there are some very, very high level ones, but um, uh, there's some really interesting uh, little boats as well to get those private experiences on. And then last but not least, um, I wanted to highlight our eco ventures. So um, our eco ventures are where we've partnered with conservation organizations that give opportunities for um, people to come and join their organization for a period and help get trained up um, to help support the work that they're doing, whether that's uh, coral restoration projects, coral planting, um, coral surveys, uh, monitoring particular sort of megafauna such as manta rays or shark species. Um, so these are really kind of fun experiences where you can go, you know, really get involved in conservation work. Um, you can also do your training as well. So there are sort of zero to hero um, opportunities where if you've never dived before, they can take you through the whole journey from open water all the way up to dive master. Um, or if you're sort of an advanced diver as already and just want to kind of bump up to, to dive master, um, but kind of give back to the oceans a little bit as well, that's all possible. Um, so these are really, really fun um, experiences. Um, a lot of our guests, will book a period of working with one of the eco ventures and then tag that on with a, you know, an exhilarating liverboard trip as well, just to kind of go get the best of the best of Indonesia. 
Um, but yeah, very keen to highlight these and encourage more people to, to get involved in them. Um, yeah. Uh, so finally, um, just like to highlight, obviously at Zoobly, we're really passionate about fish and everything underwater. Um, but we do realize there's a whole lot of uh, great stuff on land as well. Um, you've got the Komodo dragons in Komodo. Um, you've got all of the, the birds of paradise over in, in Papua. Um, I mentioned the uh, very photogenic uh, black crested macaque in Sulawesi. Um, in Bali, obviously, you've got um, the volcanoes to go do sunrise hikes on. A um, huge amount of culture there to enjoy too. So if you are looking to combine a scuba diving trip with anything land-based, again, do let us know and we'll help to kind of put those perfect combinations together for you. What's next? Hopefully you're inspired to get planning. From a planning perspective, uh, from Zublu's side, you know, we're really, really passionate about Indonesia. Um, all of the team know it incredibly well. Um, we've got great deals. Um, we're here to support you through all of those adventures when you come here. So in terms of next steps, just, you know, reach out either over email to inquiry at zoobluediving.com. Um, you can head onto the website uh, to just chat with the team there and, and start planning. Um, and I've also given you not only the central Zooblue WhatsApp number, feel free to reach out to me directly and I'd be um, delighted to help. Thank you.